If you've ever been in a room that was too warm, you probably felt the desire to leave. Under climate change, this is happening to animal populations around the world. They're shifting away from the tropics and toward the poles. This phenomenon is called climate-driven rain shift. To give a more concrete example, let me introduce you to my two study species, blueback herring, pictured on top, and ale life on bottom. These two species, which are collectively called river herring, are distributed along the east coast of the United States and overlap for much of their range. In recent decades, surveys have shown that the southernmost populations of both species have been disappearing. Alewife, for example, may be completely gone from North Carolina waters within 50 years. Though you may never have heard of these fish before, they're important for our local ecosystems because they're like fatty potato chips. Everything in or near the water likes to eat them. This means that their local extinction results in a significant loss of energy and nutrients. Surprisingly, we don't know the biological reason why these animals can no longer live in these areas. My hypothesis is that it has something to do with energy. Energy is important for everything a fish has to do, whether it's grow, move, or reproduce. However, we also know that as temperatures rise, fish have to spend more energy on an increased metabolic rate. This is kind of like when you work out in a hot room or on a hot day. You burn more calories and have to eat more food to keep your energy levels up. If fish have to put more energy toward an increased metabolic rate, what's then left in their energy budget for things like growing and reproducing? In my dissertation research, I studied juvenile river herring living in different temperatures in the laboratory and in the field. I studied how well they were able to grow and store fat, the primary source of energy that fish use. You can see by the outline a large white blob of fat in this juvenile's belly that these fish are storing an incredible amount of energy even in the first few months of life. We expect that this is critical for their long-term ability to be able to reproduce and migrate long distances. I'm seeing that juvenile river herring in warmer temperatures are growing more slowly and storing less fat. We can then expect that populations that are living in warming areas are going to get to a smaller size and have less energy available to them. Other studies have shown that fish that are smaller have less offspring and have a lower survival rate because more things can eat them. You can see how a population over time that has less survival and reproduction is more likely to go extinct. With this physiological data in hand, I'll work with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to map areas in our local rivers where temperatures will help maintain healthy growth rates and energy storage. We'll assess how much of that critical habitat will still be here in 50 or 100 years' time. Natural resource managers can then make more informed decisions about what habitat to protect as our region gets hot for herring. Thank you.